Our commentary is going to discuss Disney's early animated film, Fantasia, and focus on the ways in which it took classical music and added animation for a complementary effect, creating visual poetry in the process. Fantasia's inception began when Walt Disney decided that Mickey Mouse, his most iconic character, warranted a popularity boost. It had been some time since Mickey had appeared in a studio production, and he wanted to resuscitate his once world-famous cartoon character. Disney created a short entitled The Sorcerer's Apprentice, based on a poem originally written by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe in 1797, entitled Der Zoberlelling. In the short, Mickey Mouse was animated to be the apprentice to a master named Yen Sid, which, fittingly, is Disney spelled backwards. One day, Mickey attempts to use some of Yen Sid's magic tricks, as he is very intrigued by his master's powers, and he knows that it would save him energy. Taking Yen Sid's hat, Mickey commands a mob to carry buckets of water from a well to a cauldron, but he soon learns that he has no control over his powers. Before the creation of the short, Paul Dukas had also been influenced by Goethe's poem and created a number that would be based off of it. It too was entitled The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and Disney used this piece as a way of orchestrating the movement in his animation. When Dukas wrote the number in 1902, he attempted to make the music as descriptively programmatic as possible so that it would remain true to the poem. Disney would do the same in regards to both the poem and the number, ensuring that it would follow the narrative of the poem but feature the rhythm of the music. In the program, Mickey and the mop walk to the beat of the number as the music is diegetically guiding their march. It is just one of many examples in the film of music adding to the movement of the animation, and one example of music as a visual guide in Fantasia. The idea of taking classical music and creating matching animation for it was something that had somewhat existed prior to Fantasia. It was only ever used as a way of creating slapstick. Silly Symphonies, a Disney film made 12 years before Fantasia, utilized the technique of matching animated shorts with classical music, but Disney was not satisfied with the shorts. The audience was also displeased and thought the animation took away from the integrity of classical music. They believed that the silliness of the shorts was indirectly mocking the numbers. Disney, however, was aware of the potential power in combining classical music with animation. He wanted to go above and beyond with his new film, producing shorts where true fantasy would actually unfold, rather than simple slapstick humor, and he was going to do it by ensuring that the animation would keep the integrity of the music. Once Disney had gained the right to Dukas the Sorcerer's Apprentice, he knew that he wanted to find a popular conductor for both prestige and recognition. He found Leopold Stokowski in the late 30s, who had been the conductor of the Philadelphia Orchestra since 1912. Stokowski was an orchestral director from Britain, and is known today as one of the greatest conductors of the 20th century. Upon discussing their plans for the short, Stokowski told Disney that he enjoyed the particular music, and even said that he would do the conducting for the short for free. Disney had become very excited over Sikowski's enthusiasm and genuinely felt that they were going to create a new style of film presentation based on their knowledge of their respective mediums. Unfortunately, production costs for The Sorcerer's Apprentice had climbed much higher than they had hoped, up to $125,000. Much of this was due to the expense of their technology, and Disney quickly realized that the short itself would never be able to earn all that money back. However, rather than seeing it as a dilemma, Disney knew that he had an opportunity to take his vision one step further. He saw it as a chance to create an entire film, but composed of separate, unrelated musical numbers. He considered this new idea as a chance to make a concert out of a film, and ensure that it would be original and of high quality. There would even be a host in between each short to, to introduce the upcoming number and to discuss both the animation and the score of the upcoming segment. What you're going to see are the designs and pictures and stories that music inspired in the minds and imaginations of a group of artists. The finished film consists of eight animated segments, the most important of which being the first and the last segments, at least in terms of depicting the importance of music and imagery. The first sequence of Fantasia was Takata and Fugue in D minor, which had been first composed by Johann Sebastian Bach in 1833, and was originally only written to be an organ solo. This segment of the film is used to demonstrate fantasound, known today as surround sound. It was a stereophonic and sound reproduction system that had been developed specifically for Fantasia that created the illusion of sound moving from speaker to speaker. It was a revolutionary sound reproduction system, and Fantasia is known today as being the first major film to be made with stereophonic sound. 
The success of Fantasound and Fantasia was evident through the ways in which it matched the movements of the animated visuals as though the music was moving with the drawings. Toccata and Fugue in D minor was the first program of the film and was likely chosen to be so due to the fact that, on top of introducing Fantasound, it was the least narrative-oriented segment in the film. The sequence begins with multiple live-action shots of Stokowski and his orchestra, illuminated with bold colors and backed with superimposed shadows. As the number progresses, this segment fades into a series of non-figurative animated patterns, consisting primarily of lines, shapes, and colors. This abstraction is something that Disney Studio had never worked with previously, and chose to pace the entire piece to the score. The image of this segment exists to reflect the rhythms and sounds of the music, as though we are seeing a visual representation of the number. It is as if we are seeing the music on a screen, with the sounds and rhythms themselves creating the narrative for the segment. Many have described the segment as a subconscious insight into the way we visualize music when we listen to it. The final segment of the program was a contrast of two numbers, the first being Night on Bald Mountain, composed by Modest Mussorgsky in 1867, and Ave Maria, composed by Franz Schubert in 1825. The segment begins with Night on Bald Mountain as the devil, known here as Chernabog, emerges to summon evil spirits and restless souls from their graves. They continue to fly and dance through the air until they are stopped by the resonance of an angelus bell. The night fades into dawn, the devil ends his worship, and the demons return to their grave. A line of robed monks enter, singing Ave Maria. They walk with lit torches and eventually enter a cathedral in a very long and continuous shot. Both numbers in this segment are very powerful, but are rendered even more powerful due to the ways in which they offset one another. Many have viewed this sequence as a representation of the conflict between the profane, represented by Night on Bald Mountain, and the sacred, represented by Ave Maria doing so with two completely unrelated pieces of music. It is an exemplification of the fact that music and imagery are able to create conflict and a cohesive narrative, as well as represent opposing ideologies, even without the use of dialogue. The tone and rhythm of the score can set the tone for the visuals and perfectly sum up the emotions of what is happening. In this sequence, we easily identify Night on Bald Mountain as being evil and Ave Maria as being angelic, especially based on the way they complement the imagery. Fantasia is considered today to be one of Disney's greatest achievements, particularly through the ways in which it matched modern animation with classical music, creating a powerful sense of visual poetry as the end result. It exemplifies the combination of science and creativity, engineering, and imagination that Disney as a whole represents. It is literally the imagineering of music.